All right, Saturday night, the news came out that Francis Ngannou, the Predator, the UFC undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, is no longer a part of the UFC. And it's a sad day, it really is. I loved watching him fight, but he's no longer with them. They couldn't come to terms with the organization and they've moved on. In March, we have John Jones going up against Cyril Garn, okay? Now, Francis, the UFC, they couldn't agree on a deal. Francis has decided to walk away to go to the open market and test the waters and see what he can generate outside the UFC. Now, today, Francis Ngannou went on the Ara Hawani show and he spoke about the contract offer, went into detail with it, and it was a very, very good offer. Now, listen, Dana said Saturday night that the contract would have made him the highest earning heavyweight of all time. And by the sounds of it, that is absolutely correct because Francis, speaking to Ariel, said that the fight, the contract, pardon me, was $8 million per fight. Now, $8 million, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of dough. If your name's Floyd Money Mayweather, Conor McGregor, Cristiano Ronaldo, or Tyson Fury, other than something like that, you can't deny $8 million is a ton of money. Okay, it's a lot of money. It's a very generous offer. Okay, now I know a lot of people are going to say, because I talked about it on my podcast the other day, they're all like, Michael, you're missing the big point. It's not about money for Francis. It's about the freedom, because he wants to be his own man. And I get that, and I respect that. And of course, he doesn't want to be controlled. But if you think the main reason for a man or a woman to step in a ring or an octagon and put their life on the line and fight tooth and nail isn't for money, you are out of your mind. That is the number one reason we do it. Yes, of course, there's extracurricular, there's other circumstances, there's other reasons, there's other things that you want. But if the money isn't right, you ain't going to entertain any of it, okay? So the money is the main reason. So it was a three-fight deal, which again, I don't think the UFC generally do that. So I think they made a concession there. So it was a three-fight deal, $8 million per fight. That means if Francis Ngannou fought three fights in a year, obviously, not an easy thing to do, but it is more than possible. I fought three fights. Many people have fought more. But at heavyweight, maybe you might get injured. But let's just say hypothetical, three fights, that means this time next year is worth an extra $24 million and he would have been able to renegotiate with the UFC. But as I say, he turned it down, he's walked away, okay, because he feels he can do better elsewhere. And listen, I just want to say, first of all, I wish nothing but the best, the best of luck, the best fortune, circumstances, outcome for Francis Ngannou. What he has been through, the journey that he's been on, the adversity that he's fought through is unbelievable. It really is. He raised, by all accounts, very, very tough, humble upbringings in Cameroon, working down the sand mines, I believe. You know, then he was homeless in Paris. Then he took up mixed martial arts. And now he's the heavyweight champion of the world. And he's walking away, leaving $24 million on the table, right? As I say, you got to have respect for this man. But I hope for his sake, it was the right move. This isn't me being a company shill. I know a lot of people say that and it drives me up the goddamn wall. Am I grateful for my position in the UFC? Of course I am. I love my job. I love being a commentator. And I'm also extremely grateful for all the opportunities that I had all over the year. I traveled the world as a fighter. I made very, very good money. I turned the fortune of my family around. And yes, it was through my hard work, but also the opportunities that were given to me by Dana White and the UFC. So, you know, I don't forget those things. Call me a company man, call me a shill, call me whatever you want. But also, I want the fighters to get the best deals possible. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, when we look at Tyson Fury, sorry, pardon me, Francis Ngannou, you've got to think the big thing that he wants to do, because he wants to box, is to go and fight Tyson Fury. Now, let's get into some of the deal points here. He said that the UFC would not allow him to box at the same time. And that was one of the reasons why he wanted, well, that's why he turned the contract down, for partly, one of many reasons. Um, think about it like this. The UFC offers someone a massive contract, 8 million per fight, 24 million over three, or sorry, over three fights. Why would you want that guy to go off and fight a Tyson Fury or a Deontay Wilder or whoever it might be? Why would you want that? Because there's a good possibility that Francis would lose that fight. That will damage his stock. Simple as that. In terms of pay-per-view buying audiences, if he goes and gets knocked out in a boxing match, that damages his stock, okay? And then on top of that, it kind of adds fuel to the fire that boxers are better fighters than MMA fighters and all the rest of it, but that's not the important point either. What if Francis was to get injured? 
Boxing is a very, very dangerous sport. So is mixed martial arts. Let's have it right. They're both heavy-duty combat sports. But the reality is in boxing, sadly, there's still a number of deaths per year. That's not the case in mixed martial arts. That's a whole other video, but boxing is more dangerous because of the repeated headshots with bigger gloves. Therefore, they can take more shots to the head. So the, there's two opportunities here. I mean, there's three outcomes. One, Francis wins the fight. God bless him. There's another one that Francis loses that damages his stock. And then thirdly, that he gets injured. So that's not attractive to the UFC. They're offering him $24 million over three fights. It's like, can you just have the fights here, please? And then go do whatever you want to do. Uh, now, look, listen, I get it. I get him wants to do that. I get that it's always been a childhood dream of his. But is he going to be a guy like Tyson Fury? Let's be honest. Do we really think that? Can he catch him? Can he catch him and knock him out 100% without question? Without question. But Tyson Fury has been fighting the best boxers on planet Earth for a long time. He's six foot nine. He's got tremendous coordination. The gas tank on the man is ridiculous. He is so fast as well. When you look at him, come on, he's not exactly, you know, the best looking athlete on the planet. He's got the big beer belly and everything. But man, he can box and he is fast and he is not someone to take lightly. So I think the, the reality is that Francis would lose a boxing match. Upsets happen. Of course they do. But I think any smart man, if they had to bet on that fight, would bet on Tyson Fury. And that's not an insult to Francis Ngannou. And Francis, if you see this, if you get that opportunity, I hope you prove me wrong. I really do. And listen, you know, you have got the power. I know that. And you can box as well. But just this guy, Tyson Fury or a Deontay or an Anthony Joshua, that is all they know. That is all they've done at the highest level for many, many years. Oh, dear. So is it likely... I don't think it's likely to happen. Now, outside of a boxing match, where else can he earn that kind of money? Well, Bellator can't afford that. No way. And they don't really have a history of pay-per-view events. Now, they have put a one or two pay-per-view events and by all accounts, did not perform very well. So I doubt they can afford to pay him something like $8 million, $10 million, whatever it is. It would have to be a higher offer, wouldn't it? I don't think they have the money to do that. And again, maybe I'm wrong. The PFL. I'm not sure the PFL do either, you know. Yes, they've just signed with Jake Paul. And I know there's talks of Jake Paul fighting Francis Ngannou. That ain't going to happen. Jake Paul made an offer to Nate Diaz, two fights. We're yet to see what's going on with that. But I don't think the PFL, I mean, I'm granted, I'm sure they have wealthy backers and all the rest of it. But do they have 10, 9, 10, 11 million dollars to, to offer to Francis Ngannou? I don't know if they do. Another one that came out of the woodwork was bare knuckle boxing. Bare knuckle boxing. I mean, come on, for the love of God, who in their right mind is stepping into a ring or an octagon with no gloves on with Francis Ngannou? Because I tell you what, I'm bloody not. That's for damn sure. Um, but listen, it's not. This isn't me hating on him. I'm not hating at all. I just, I'm just sitting here thinking, wow, that's a lot of money. Has he made the right decision? And I hope for him he has. I hope he gets to prove me wrong. And I'm not saying he is wrong. I'm not saying he shouldn't have taken it. I'm just saying, I'm just looking at it objectively and going, that was a good offer. It was a very good offer. Um, you know, but money's not everything. That's what everyone says. It is when you're fighting. Money is very, very important. And the opportunity to do whatever you want. Yeah, I get that. But those opportunities will still be there. He wanted other things like health insurance. Okay. And, that, and that's very noble of him to say that. But US federal law states that employees, not contractors, need to do 30 hours per week for a company to get health insurance. Okay. Now, by the way, the UFC do have health insurance for the fighters. I know this because I was one. Okay. If you are injured in a training camp, you are covered. If you are injured in the fight, you are covered. I've had many knee surgeries, eye surgeries, elbow surgery, all covered under the UFC's insurance plan. So I think he's talking about health insurance year round. And listen, that's a noble cause for him to say. But, but will he regret it? I don't know if he will. I don't know if he won't. I don't know if he should have turned it down, but it's just flabbergasting to me. I mean, listen, McGregor earns tons. Floyd Mayweather does. There's a lot of big pay-per-view draws out there. And Francis Ngannou is definitely a draw. Let's be honest. But the offer that he got was $8 million. That's pretty good. $24 million he could have re negotiated maybe a year from now. I don't know. Listen, whatever whatever it is I'm going on now, I'm waffling. I'm going around in circles. What do you think? What do you think? Do you think he did the right thing? Do you think he did the wrong thing? Do you think it's all going to work out? 
I hope it does. You know, where do you think he's going to end up? Let me know in the comments. And I think as we see now, as the sport of mixed martial arts is getting more and more popular, I mean, got to remember 10, 15 years ago, 15 years ago, well, I signed in, I think everything's, I think 15 years ago, is like 1995, Donna. I'm getting old. But like, you know, in the early days, like 2000, yeah, th there wasn't much money in it unless you were an absolute megastar like a Chuck Liddell. 2003, four, five. Um, but now there is, there is big money. And guys like Conor McGregor, Ronda Rousey, Brock Lesnar, Francis Ngannou, there's lots of money to be made, you know, and it goes up all the time. I did very well. I made a lot of money. A lot of fighters make a lot of money. Uh, and Francis Ngannou, whatever he does, I hope outside of here, he goes off and makes a ton. I hope he makes an absolute fortune and I wish him nothing but the best. One thing he did say in that interview, though, is that he is open to a return to the UFC. And as a fan, I just hope that happens. I've never got to call one of Francis Ngannou's fights. That would be amazing. I would love to do that. But more importantly, as a fan, because I'm a fan of this sport more than anything, as a fan of this sport, I want to see Francis Ngannou in the octagon fighting the best people that he can in mixed martial arts. The UFC has the best heavyweight division. Right now, there's some tremendous fights for him. There's Cyril Garn again. There's John Jones. There's Tom Aspinall. There's Sergei Pavlovich. And the list goes on. Anyway, I am going round in circles and I apologize. Subscribe and ring the bell. Let me know in the comments. Go easy. Don't be calling me a shill because you're wrong. Anyway, all the best.